horrorcore can be traced back to the 80s through groups like the Ghetto Boys and Gangsta Nip, but the subgenre didn't officially become coined until 1994 with the Gravediggers album Six Feet Deep. This is one of the greatest rap albums of all time and came from one of rap's first supergroups. It's easy to look at Prince Paul and RZA in 1994 and think that they were on the top of the game, with Paul coming off a three album classic run with De La Soul and RZA on the cusp of one of the greatest producer runs in history. But the Gravediggers weren't created at the top of the mountain. They were assembled from the ashes of four careers that were struggling to take off. Prince Paul started assembling the Gravediggers in 1991, when the four artists were all at a low point in their careers. RZA was then known as Prince Rakim and was struggling to get his solo career off the ground. Too Poetic was a struggling solo artist on Tommy Boy, and Fruquan, who had left the group set to Sonic years earlier, was designing and selling clothes out of his house, and Paul was devastated and in a state of depression after his record label Doo Doo Man Records fell through and failed. Paul decided to call the three MCs he knew, who in his mind were the illest in the world, and since they all had not much going on in their careers at the time, they went right to work together. The group created a demo that they were proud of, and shopped it around to all the big labels at the time, and they were turned down by everybody. Jive, Def Jam, Tommy Boy, and many more. After years of getting rejected, Paul was right about to give up. RZA was off doing his own thing with Wu-Tang, Fruquan was in the clothing game, and Too Poetic was homeless and was about to take a job working at a bagel factory in Long Island. But then, just when all hope seemed lost, Paul got a call from G Street Records, who offered them a deal. Six Feet Deep was released in August of 1994 and is one of the greatest rap albums of all time. The name The Grave Diggers was meant to be a metaphor as the group was setting out to resurrect the mentally dead. The term horrorcore was actually coined in these Grave Diggers sessions by the legendary hip hop journalist Havelock Nelson. The image that the group created is what the entire horrorcore genre stands on. With the classic dark production and horror imagery, they even renamed themselves to fully embrace the themes of death that they're going for. Prince Paul was the Undertaker, Fruquan was the Gatekeeper, Too Poetic was the Grim Reaper, and Rizza was the Resurrector. None of the three MCs of the group knew each other before Paul introduced them, so it's amazing that they had such incredible chemistry. They all fully embrace the concept of the record, and each MC brings their own style and flair to each song. Fruquan comes through with the more laid back and cool verses, Too Poetic brings the energy with these melodic far side meets ODB off the wall flows, and the RZA raps possibly better than he ever has in his whole career. Most of the album was produced by Paul, so it really gave RZA a chance to focus on his MC. The album is incredible from start to finish, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention what is probably the group's most popular song, 1-800-Suicide. The song represents what the group is all about, featuring a dark and sort of spooky beat, with the group tackling a horribly morbid topic with a sort of cartoonish and absurdist twist on it. This would be the perfect intro song for anybody who wants to know what horrorcore is. Shabazz the Disciple and Killer Priest make excellent appearances on the concept track Diary of a Madman, which is another standout here. Prince Paul actually has told a great story about the creation of this track. He says that when the four MCs laid their verses, there was no concept, nothing bridging the verses together. So Paul added the courtroom interludes after the fact, helping to create a story that these four rappers were all currently on trial pleading insanity in a courtroom. And that's just what makes Prince Paul so important, especially to this group. His unique creative vision is able to take what would otherwise be just dope beats and rhyme and turn it into a classic. Now the Grave Diggers to Prince Paul was always meant to be a one-time project, so on their follow-up he took a bit of a backseat, only working on a couple of tracks. The Pick the Sickle and the Shovel was released in September 1997, and is extremely underrated. I understand the historic significance of their first record, but song by song, this one stands right up there with it to me. Since this album was produced by a variety of people, the sound of it is a lot more encompassing than Six Feet Deep. It doesn't have that flawless dark tone, but it gives the MCs a great mix of vibes to work with. And on the top of that great production, the MCing took a huge step on this record, especially for Too Poetic. Listening to this album, it sounds like he was on a personal mission to prove that he was an elite MC. The one-two punch of Too Poetic and Fruquan is perfection. And then when you add the RZA to that, you got a recipe for success. This album, while still feeling true to the Gravediggers, is definitely lighter in tone, and slightly more conscious, and I think that's perfect. This album not being a retread of the original helps make this one of the greatest two album runs of all time. Too Poetic tragically died after a long fight with colon cancer in July of 2001, but during his battle he refused to slow down, recording the Gravedigger's third album Nightmare in A Minor in the process. At this point the group featured only Poetic and Fruquan, 
and it's probably the group's darkest work yet, including many references to poetic struggle with cancer, as well as apocalyptic themes to do with the teachings of the 5% nation. Although RZA didn't take part in this album, some Wu-Tang affiliates such as Fourth Disciple, True Master, Prodigal Son, Beretta 9, and Shogun Assassin were all involved. Fruquan went on to release a few solo projects, and even released some more music under the Gravedigger's name as recently as 2021. RZA, as we all know, became one of the most important artists in hip-hop history. Prince Paul, who had an absolutely incredible career, had a podcast with Open Mike Eagle called What Had Happened Was, and there's an episode where he does a full deep dive and talks about the Gravediggers for a full hour, so definitely check that out if you want to know more about the group. Rest in peace, Too Poetic. Thanks for watching everybody, hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, if you enjoyed the video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. Make sure you go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Def Goldblum. I'm always posting about whatever albums or songs that I'm feeling at the time, so if you want more recommendations, go check that out. Also, make sure to go check out the producers that I have links to down in the description. I've been lucky enough to have some very talented artists provide the beats for my videos lately, so thank you to all of them for that. And if you're a beat maker who wants me to use some of your beats in the future, hit me up on Twitter, I always respond. I hope you guys have been having a great 2022. As always, there's a lot more coming at you guys soon. Thanks for watching.